I told you I'll be back. <laughs> hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. As I just reviewed the original 1984 sci-fi action thriller classic, The Terminator, and I figured maybe I can continue with the Terminator franchise, I decided to review another awesome sequel to the original called Terminator 2. Judgment Day, also known as T2, with Arnold Schwarzenegger back as the Terminator, T-800, the model series, only this time he's not the villain in the original, he's a killing machine, no, this time he's more heroic, and he's programmed to protect the son of Sarah Connor, John. He's 10 years old, and he lives with his foster parents uh, after Connor was being sent to a mental ward after bombing a computer factory and trying to warn everyone that Judgment Day is going to appear with Skynet's going to launch a nuclear holocaust. But in 2029, we got another Terminator, so this time there are only two. We got the most highly advanced prototype that we ever had that's formed in liquid metal, and that is T-1000. And it's played by Robert Patrick. So yes, Linda Hamilton reprised the role as Sarah Connor in a much tougher role than she was in the original. So she really did change after that. And of course, we got Eric Furlong playing John Connor. And this was his first film. And what made this movie improving was that this was the biggest budget blockbuster that was ever made, which the original film was only a small budget. But it did make a success um, upon its release. You know, even with all the troubles that they had to go for. But writer and director James Cameron had returned. He also produced. But he joins in with uh, William Wisher Jr. who happens to be the one who gave him the additional dialogue for his script. Which also he offered uh, Gail Ann Hurd to um, come up with some ideas you know, for his script. For, for the original film. But this time he, you know, he came up with another script. Uh, he's joined by with uh, cinematographer Adam Greenberg, along with um, the score by Bradford Dell. So they all return, and they even got Mark Goldblatt to do some more editing. Joining in with two editors, uh, Conway Buff and Richard A. Harris. And this time uh, the movie is being released by. TriStar Pictures, uh, along with Caracol Pictures, the same company that gave us films like Rambo First Blood Part 2, along with Rambo Free, uh, Red Heat, which also was Schwarzenegger. Uh, we also had uh, Total Recall, again, Schwarzenegger was in that. So I think what made for the... So I guess the idea of actually doing a sequel after seven years was the fact that they had to uh, pay the rights uh, from Hemdale Film Corporation since they own the franchise, half of it. But seeing that Hemdale was going through bankruptcy problems later on, and they're going through some financial troubles to themselves, they figured maybe that Cargo, they figured that Carico might take a chance to um, acquire it, so that way they can they can try to make this movie even bigger and better than ever. Yeah. And what's even more surprising though, seeing that this is the most expensive film to date, because the budget was only, get this, $102 million, um, which is also, at first, was $94 million. So, compared to the budget of the original film, which was only $4 million, but doubles to six, I was like, wow, who would have thought that 
for such a small film that they can actually do something this huge? Well, because they brought back the team of Fantasy 2, the same team that worked on the original, and they also join in with Stan Winston, you know, with his studio, you know, doing all these prosthetic uh, makeup effects and all that with the actors. But not only that, but they brought in OM, yeah, Industrial Light and Magic, to provide CGI for the character of T-1000. You know, the way this character moves, you know, he's a metallic uh, polyalloy, and he goes around uh, mimicking everyone. He, he also moves and forms uh, with liquid metal. It can also change this into, like, metallic knives that he can create. I mean, he can do everything. I mean, he can move around going through, um, like, like, for example, he can go through a, uh, a jail bar or, or, like, tries to, like, go straight, go through, like, any other location that he's at. I mean, he can even go through a police helicopter when he changes into liquid form, you know, like moving around, and yes, plus he gets shot several times with all these holes uh, coming from his body or even his his face, you know, through his eye, and then it just suddenly it, it form it actually uh, forms uh, back to its place, and yeah, I mean, this was definitely the most powerful um, Terminator yet. So, yeah, of course. Alright, so the, the Blu-ray that I picked up is from the 2015 release. Uh, what they did here was that um, after the Skynet edition, which had all three cuts included with with several features joined in. Yeah, there's, there's more features on that release. Uh, sadly, this one only gets a few, which is on the back. Um, this is basically the 2015 which basically this might as well be the Blu-ray release of the 2003 uh, Extreme uh, DVD edition that was released by Artisan Home Entertainment, which I happen to own by the way. The one that has the, the metallic indoor uh, skeleton cover art. Yeah, It's in one of my uh, cabinets around. So I, I was going to take it out, but I figure I'll just leave it in for now since I have the Blu-ray. And I love this cover art. I mean, what they did was they updated it uh, directly from the movie poster. So now there's more to the the character of, of the Terminator. And he has the shotgun rifle. And he's riding on the motorcycle. I mean, it just it shows how badass he is. Yeah. This also has a digital copy included, which I already use. It actually contains um, both the the unrated special edition and the theatrical cut included so, so I already used it <laughs> and this is exactly what the what this cover looks like yeah, as you can see the metallic ender skeleton on the side this is actually the cover art that they would have used for the uh, Skynet edition oh and just to note though that both the digital copies uh, of both cuts uh, does feature the TriStar Pictures logo restored uh, back in with Caracal Pictures because it seems like every release seems like every release of Terminator 2 Judgment Day they always um, cut out the TriStar Pictures logo and just leaves in the Caracal Pictures logo. It's almost like they got the international release and it's been that way ever since but I know there are some releases, mostly the international release and the laser disc, maybe the later ones, would actually restore the TriStar Pictures logo intact. Um, just to keep that in mind, it's kind of like how um, Orion Pictures uh, logo got cut out in the original releases of of the original Terminator. Which, by the way, the original Orion Pictures logo actually contains uh, the music that they used, which would later be used in, in some movies uh, when they updated it. Yeah, you know, that famous um, futuristic uh, fanfare that they had. Yeah. So that was really cool. 
So let's get to the review. Stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, Linda Hamilton, Edward Furlong, Robert Patrick, Joe Morton, who went on to do the film Speed, as well as uh, The Astronaut's Wife, Earl Boyne, uh, Danny Cooksey, yes, Danny Cooksey from Salute Your Shorts, uh, along with Tiny to the Ventures, Different Strokes, and also does uh, Dave the Barbarian, very underrated series from the Disney Channel, among others. Uh, Alexander Berkeley, in several films, uh, Janine Goldstein, Michael Bean actually returns, uh, only in the special edition release, just so you know. Because they actually feature some scenes of of him returning and during a flashback scene with um, Sarah Connor when she was uh, at the mental wards after taking those pills. Um, there was other scenes uh, included, but I'm going to mention that later. Devon Nixon and S. Epepha Merkerson. It's written by James Cameron and William Wisher Jr. and it's directed by, once again, James Cameron. The movie began set in 1995 in Los Angeles, California. We meet John Connor, who's 10 years old, that's played by Eric Furlong, who lives with his foster parents, uh, Jeanette and Todd Boyd, both played by Jeanette Goldstein and Alexander Berkeley. He wasn't getting along with them very well. I mean, yes, uh, he does collect all of the posters and music and stuff. You know, he does listen to Public Enemy. Yes, he even wears the shirt. <laughs> I can definitely tell. He's basically a troubled kid, as you could tell. Uh, he also has his best friend Tim, played by Danny Cooksey. You know, hangs around with him. You know, going around to a lot of places with his motorcycle, such as uh, going to the mall to start playing video games at the arcade. Yeah, that's where he starts to uh, uh, use his uh, the one of those uh, pass keys where you can actually encrypt the code in order for you to actually uh, enter it and be able to collect all the cash. Uh, from the ATM, and that's what he does. So, rides around with the motorcycle going down into the tunnels everywhere, yeah, that sort of thing. Anyway, um, there was a flashback, or at this rate, flash forward to uh, 2029. Yeah, the future where it was a battle between the machines and the humans, which John Connor, of course, is the savior of the resistance. Um, when he got older, he got all these scars on his face. Um, anyway, his mother, Sarah Connor, played by Linda Hamilton, because she's the narrator of the film, had been preparing him throughout his entire childhood that um, since he's going to become the, sa the savior, that he was warning him as opposed to everyone, that Judgment Day is going to appear on August 29th, 1997. Because that's when Skynet is going to control and starts uh, a nuclear holocaust. Yeah, which has that frightening scene, um, which I'm going to explain uh, after. Yeah, where everyone... Um, so anyway, she got arrested and was sent into a mental hospital after attempting to bomb a computer factory. So then, in, so then the, back in 2029, Skynet had sent a new Terminator, only this time it's designed as an advanced uh, prototype, the T-1000, played by Robert Patrick has been sent back in time to kill John. So he's made out of um, Mimic uh, Polyali, which is liquid metal. So it gets the ability to take on shape and appearance of almost everything he touches. So yes, so every, everything he does, he's going to form himself to become anyone else. He's going to start 
you know, become mimicking everyone, and he's going to start uh, forming, you know, any kind. Like he can make uh, all these uh, metallic knives too that he can come up with. I mean, he could do anything. I mean, he could transform and starts doing all these forming and stuff, you know, with blades and any kind of shapes that he does. He he can even come directly from the ground as he forms and. I mean, wow. So anyway, each the T-1000 dresses up as a cop. I mean, yes, he was fully nude. Um, after uh, he took uh, the cop's clothes, and he was about to find where, where John Connor lives, so that way he'd go after him. Of course, at the beginning, we also meet Terminator uh, Terminator T-800, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, which uh, he actually arrives being sent back in time to actually protect John Connor, as it was being sent by John himself. Okay, yeah, he was fully nude, once up at a local bar, you know, trying to see one of those other bikers out there to actually lend him his clothes. He refuses, so what happened was, of course, there was like a bar fight scene where, um, <laughs> where actually, um, the, the biker started to take out his cigar and starts to, uh, put a sick cigar butt on, on his, uh, on the shoulder, and then later he starts to, um, or part of his pack, and then later, the other, he starts to uh, take out a knife, and then one of the other bikers was like taking out one knife. He was about to stab him, but then he got stabbed. Um, the biker got thrown all the way straight into the stove, yeah, and he gets all these burns from his hands. And he also took out the other guy um, who just uh, took out that. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the pull stick and just whacked him, broke him, and then he threw him around. So now the Terminator um, had finally took his clothes and dresses up wearing that leather jacket. Yeah. And he also um, took out the shades of, of a, uh, a bar owner who also has uh, a shotgun a shotgun rifle. And yeah, that's where the song um, Bad to the Bone uh, was played, which is often here in many movies, of course, ever since Christine. I mean, and that scene alone just shows how badass the Terminator turned out to be. I mean, and yes, I mean, you can even tell. So he also rides on a motorcycle, you know, going, going all the way to Los Angeles on the freeway. So that way he'll be able to find where John Connor lives. And we're going to get to, to the scene where just when John was with Tim going all the way to um, the local shopping mall for the arcade. Because, yeah, of course, he does uh, use the pass key that he got from his mom, Sarah. Because she's the one that knows everything about that where he actually steals um, tons of money you know, by crypting the pass key and then be able to go all the way and, and play all these video games, getting some quarters until T-1000 shows up and starts to find where John is at and you know, he's trying to tell the authorities where he's, he's at and that's when he starts to chase uh, John around until the Terminator shows up and was ready to uh, shoot down the um, T-1000. You know, just when John was at the hallways of the mall, you, know, you can see a Pepsi uh, vending machine, and the other guy was was in the way, but he got shot down. So then he escapes, um, going uh, directly to his uh, to the parking st uh, structure, so he can get his motorcycle. 
and that's where we get a long chase scene where um, the team of thousand steals the the big rig and starts chasing the John around and going straight into the tunnels until Terminator finally shows up and I love that scene where he takes the shotgun rifle and he cocks it by swinging it around like that you know, just to shoot uh, the T-1000 you know, through the the tunnels and from the truck that he has so it, it's like a long shot and it was like wow amazing a uh, very intense chase scene, but it works. Um, and then when he finally uh, arrived in his motorcycle to to take out John, so that way he'll protect him, he'll be able to... Uh, T-1000 crushes uh, his motorcycle driving through the, the big rig. I mean, it just uh, cuts uh, the top, and then he's just... just continues going on, and then... and later... Um, you know, he stops the motorcycle, you know, cocks his gun, and just shoots. And then later, um, the truck explodes. And he's continuing riding that along, and then trying to make sure if, if he comes back. But, yep, he does come back when the Team 1000 walks through the flames as the truck explodes. Okay. So, um... Back to the mental hospital, uh, Sarah was um, recovering after six months. Um, that's where we get to see uh, Dr. Peter Sibling of Siberman, and played by Earl Boyne, who's now the psychiatrist of Sarah. But um, he was trying to convince that the Terminator isn't real. That's why they started showing all these photographs later on to find out just to witness uh, what just happened uh, back in 84. Like they thought that it never did happen but apparently it did. I, I guess they just never pay attention because that's what happened to all the cops uh, during the police station. Yeah. So he, so she's been staying there for so long she wanted to, to be released because you know she felt better, she was hoping, she was trying to warn uh, Peter that his her son is in danger and it could be much worse if, if she continues to stay there for so long. But they refused to let her out, so so they had to lock her up completely. And and then next thing you know, um, she started to form a plan to actually escape. Um, just when both um, the Terminator and John Connor, you know, they're about to meet each other uh, for the first time, and and that's when the Terminator explains to uh, John why was he sent, and it turns out that John, you know, 35 years uh, ago, that he was the one who sent him to protect himself. So now. John can actually control uh, the Terminator, you know, be able to do exactly what he says. So it's, so it's like he's treating him like like he's a child. <laughs> like he's his own father in that sort of way. So it's sort of like a, an interesting bonding together. But he's also telling him not to kill because you just can't go around, because you just can't, you know, you just can't go around killing people, you know, for his own promise, but he always breaks his promise and <laughs> he's just going to start killing anyway. <laughs> like, for example, when they're about to go um, to the mental hospital and, you know, just so they can get um, Sarah Connor out of there, yes, John actually promised uh, the Terminator not to kill, but apparently he did shot uh, <laughs> the security guard <laughs> in the knees. And then he says, he'll live. <laughs> okay, so um, Sarah was about to escape. Yeah, you know, he was also about to threaten all the guards. Um, yeah, even one guard who who actually uh, licked her, licked her face. 
Um, Sarah actually escaped uh, using the this using the uh, the paper pin and just uh, went straight to the the janitor's room. She took out um, the mop. Uh, yeah, just ripped it off the stick and just whacked the the guard straight. Just whack the guard along with the orderlies around, and he's about to threaten. Um, so he actually injected um, a chemical uh, to one orderly, and then he took out uh, Doctor Sib Superman to actually uh, inject him. Yeah, threatening to inject him with uh, liquid bleach. It has um, no ammonia on there. It has ammonia in there. So she's about to threaten him so that way he'll be able to she'll be able to get the keys to escape. And she did until the Terminator arrives. She's still remembering about what happened in the past. Because she's afraid that this Terminator is gonna attack her again. But then, of course, John Connor comes, and that's where the Terminator came and fight back all these older Lees, and and that's when the, they're about to uh, John came to uh, help Sarah, you know, recover and be able to escape, and yeah, this is where Terminator says, "Come with me if you want to live," you know, just like the line that Carl Reese said in the original. So they all escaped, only to be chased down by T-1000, which he actually came earlier at the mental hospital, disguised as uh, a security guard. You know, he actually killed uh, one of the other, he actually killed him, by the way, and starts to mimic him, and that's just so he can go after Sarah Connor. So, of course... There's a long chase uh, between the Sarah, John, and the Terminator. Yes, I know Terminator goes around shooting him, and all these uh, bullet holes went straight at him, and then it disappears. They're about to go to the parking structure. Uh, they first went on the elevator, and yeah, just when the Team of Thousand was about to open the elevator by you know using his. Uh, by creating these metal forms to open it, but, but it got shut down. And then, but he wants up um, on top of the um, elevator, so that way he'll jump right through on top. And then that's where we led to the chase scene. And she, they steal the car, they drive by, and then. And T-1000 was running as fast as he can and was ready to you know, form these metal uh, metallic knives and chase them by going after the, <laughs> after the back of the car. And then the Terminator and, and Sarah Connor had to start shooting the, the T-1000 to have them out of there because the T-1000 was on top of the car. And then finally, T-1000 uh, <laughs> finally got out of there. So it's uh, rolling around as a crab. And yes, uh, John actually took the piece of that was stuck from the car and threw it out. And that's where it forms, went straight into the T-1000's uh, <laughs> boot. So anyway. Uh, they're about to uh, drive by somewhere in Mexico where um, that's where um, we meet uh, Sarah's uh, where we get to meet like a family of, of other people joining in that Sarah was actually working with um, that's where they collect all the weaponry that they got uh, inside uh, the basements or a storage room, yeah. But all these powerful machine guns and all this other stuff that they got. Uh, also, um, you know, John was about to teach him all this other stuff just to make him look awesome and cool. Yeah, even coming up with new catchphrases such as 
Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. Um, so anyway, now I'm going to get to the um, the scene where Sarah was uh, having a a daydream where suddenly she remember she begins to find out a vision that that could predict the the future or what seems to be. Um, was that she spotted um, a local playground, you know, where Sarah was, you know, spending time uh, with her son, John. You know, they were just going on the playground, and then suddenly a nuclear holocaust appears, wiping out the entire city of downtown L.A., even wiping down the entire playground of many kids and parents around. All, all turn into dust, and that's when the, you see uh, Sarah trying to warn them to get out of there. Uh, I mean, you can see her screaming, you know, trying to push the the fence around, and then suddenly she's she's all burned into a crisp, and that's where you see the skeleton of her. I mean, that that was truly frightening, uncomfortable, but it was very important to that scene. And then when she woke up, uh, she actually carved with a knife that says, No Fates, on the table. So then she escapes just to go after the, the creator of Skynet, Miles Bennett Dyson, who's the engineer at Cyberdyne Systems. Uh, and he's played by John, uh, Joe Morton. Because Sarah actually learns that he was the man responsible for that. So that's where he had, she had to go on her way to his apartment to shoot him down, so that way he'll avoid him to start uh, the revolution of what's going to happen in the future. And that's the basis of Skynet. Sarah actually used all the weapons that she needed, uh, you know, along with uh, the Terminator. So for protection, since she had a friend from Mexico, was learning about Judgment Day that's going to appear. So he's trying, so the way, so once they arrived, just when Sarah already had, had shot uh, Dyson, um, they're about to explain how to get into the Cyberdyne system so that way they can go grab the CPU uh, chip uh, along with the uh, metallic hand uh, along with the metallic arm so that way you know they'll steal it so, so it can prevent and delete all these files that they have so that way they won't start a, a nuclear war for Skynet because that means that yeah it's gonna happen so they're trying to avoid all that um, until the police arrived on scene and and all the rest of the, the security guards that you know they caught one and put him in the bathroom but another security guard came and and they found out uh, you know that they're about to um, you know steal the the chip and and the metallic arm and all this and then then they started shooting gas around they they took out the Terminator suddenly takes out the machine guns and starts shooting all these uh, police officers around while trying to warn them. But he's, he, but he's trying his best not to kill everyone. He's just he's trying to, to shoot down all the, the police cars. You know, he's trying to take down all these other guards, you know, all wearing those gas masks. He was also shooting all the gas, too. Um, took them down, and, and then suddenly... The T-1000 finally arrives because, you know, he, he actually uh, found the reports, you know, where Sarah and John were at, so, at Dyson's uh, apartment, all crashed down. So now he came all the way to Cyberdyne Systems, so, of course, he's going to go after Sarah and, and John again with the Terminator. And that's where we lead to a chase scene where, you know, where he starts to go all the way up, where he starts to take the motorcycle, he starts to drive all the way straight to the building, it starts to go all the way up 
on, on the side of, of the high-rise building and just crashes straight into the police helicopter and then the, you know, for the glass window and then just jumps uh, directly into the windshield of the, the helicopter you know, where the pilot is at and, and he tells the pilot to get out you know, just forming his you know using his yeah forming his liquid yeah with liquid form going through and you know as he's dressed up with the police helicopter with, using the police uh, helmet and and shades yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and and then the the helicopter pilot jumps out and that's where we lead to a chase scene where where the terminator along with Sarah and John had steal a a uh, actually steals a, a metal truck um, see, seeing that uh, Dyson had uh, blows himself up with everyone involved you know so they all escaped and yeah, he got killed because he got shot and stuff anyway yeah because he blows up the half of the building um, anyway so there was a chase scene going on around um, the helicopter crashes straight into the truck. Um, Sarah got shot, and then the, the truck flips over. They were about to steal another truck, which happens to be a uh, a church truck. But seeing that uh, that the T1000 already crashes the helicopter, decides to steal a a tanker truck, but it turns out to be the liquid nitrogen truck yeah the one that that forms uh, you know liquid nitrogen that would freeze so that's where they drive all the way straight into the steel meal factory and that's where we led to the final battle between the terminator and t-1000 which at this point you know the tanker truck had crashes and and breaks apart into those the liquid nitrogen. It freezes uh, the T1000. You know, he's, yeah, he started to freeze when he was starting to walk, but got stuck, and then he was starting to fall apart. And that's where the Terminator says that famous line, "Hasta la vista, baby," and shots him and explodes until he starts to change you know with all these liquid forms you know forming in so that way he'll come back and that's where we led to again the final battle at the steel mill where where Sarah was trying to hide the John somewhere so that way the team of thousand won't find him so then Sarah came and takes the shotgun and starts shooting them completely um, the Terminator was about to shoot him down but, but starts uh, pushing him around and crushes his uh, arm um, he also had taken the the steel uh, brick to actually crushes his face and his arms and everything and shoulders and crushes him completely and then also takes uh, and then later he he actually takes uh, the metal part to uh, jam him straight into his back and goes straight into his, his heart and that's where you see all these electric shocks coming so that means he's gonna well he's gonna be terminated or well, was gonna be terminated but actually he comes back when the the computer you know, through him actually uh, restarts so now he'll be able to stop him completely at the end just when Sarah was shooting him down uh, John was about to try to find where Sarah is and even though he thought that was Sarah that's already uh, injured but no that wasn't that was the T-1000 mimicking him and so now you know Sarah just came with the shotgun and shot him down and he even shot his eye and then kept shooting him and 
till she was all out. And yeah, this is what T-1000 was doing this. And then, until the Terminator arrives, already injured and, and ready to shoot him one last time. And finally, he fell all the way down into the, the mountain bowl of lava. And that's where you get to see all the forms of him, you know, especially when he was disguised um, as uh, the foster mother. Which, by the way, um, the team of Thousand did kill uh, his foster parents um, in the beginning of the scene. Especially that scene where uh, the mother, well, the skies uh, from Team One Thousand, you know, during that phone call, and yes, the Terminator disguised uh, John's voice because he knows that there's something cooking coming around. <laughs> I mean, he found out that his parents were dead, and that's, so you probably so at this rate, Team One Thousand actually kills uh, her um, you know, off screen, but disguise her and. And starts to uh, shove the metal uh, knife at uh, his fodder. Yeah, just when he was about to drink some milk, which is Lady Lee. Uh, for those who don't know, if you're in Southern California or Northern California, you probably know the product Lady Lee. That was from Lucky. Yeah, Lucky stores uh, that would later become Albertsons. Yeah, it was bought by them. Although they did, in some locations, they did brought back um, Lucky through uh, Super Value, which happens to own Albertsons, which now owns uh, Safeway. Yeah. Which, uh, which also um, carries Bonds. <laughs> okay. Um, but yes, um, he was finally terminated um, as he forms completely and disappears. Uh, that's what it leads to that sad scene, and yeah, this is what I'm going to get to. And this scene really got got to me, and so is my brother when he saw it. Was when the Terminator decided to, to, to terminate himself after throwing the the metallic hand and the CPU chip completely. So this was a, a downbeat ending. John didn't want this to happen because he wanted this to continue. So hoping that in the future, you know, if something goes wrong, maybe you know they'd be safe. But they figured this was going to be over. So now, uh, well, it's seen that uh, Terminator can't self terminate. He decided to terminate himself by going all the way down to the molten lava and yes he even put in the the foam you know as, which actually explains good luck yeah so now he misses uh, Terminator for life and yeah. John was crying yeah very sad moment yeah, so it's a thumbs up um, I, I couldn't believe I heard an article where Hamilton was, uh, and even the director Tim Miller was criticizing it. Yeah, because of since we have Dark Fate now, there was nothing wrong with that scene where they show Terminator pulling the thumbs up. I mean, nothing wrong with that. But nevertheless, uh, that was uh, a great scene. I mean, it, it was a great scene too when when uh, the Terminator actually shot the grenade launcher at. Uh, the T-1000 uh, during the end so yeah I thought that was awesome because he actually blasts and he almost looks exactly like uh, the creature from The Fiend yeah John Carpenter's The Fiend that's what it looked like too when he was all blasted off and he fell all the way down into the lava so I thought wow <laughs> okay so anyway um Terminator 2 Judgment Day. I mean, what can you say as everyone else had said it? It's one of the best sequels ever made. It's awesome. I mean, it has some incredible special effects all done by Industrial Light and Magic. Uh, Stan Winston 
comes once again creating the prosthetic spatial makeup effects you know for Arnold and even though they had to spend three hours uh, joining in they also created all the puppetry in the mix they still use puppetry and all this other practical stuff with Fantasy 2 um, they use all these other sets even some miniature sets or any of those other shots you know through the studio and they were going to later use uh, by using these blue screen effects and stuff so it just makes it work uh, yeah I mean the entire team they did an excellent job and you know it's hard to believe for for such a big budget film you can do a lot of that see this is ex and the fact that the technology at the time with CGI effects uh, for the team 1000 I mean think of it this way without all the films uh, that followed after this you know you wouldn't have any uh, movies uh, that's done by this technology at all think about that you know like Jurassic Park for instance I mean yes because they bought the team to uh, create this this entire amazing the technology and it still holds up today I mean hard to believe after all these years I mean that's why the sequel is more magnificent than ever. I mean, it was awesome for the performances of Arnold Schwarzenegger reprising the role of Terminator. This time, more heroic than ever before, and, and a total badass too. He's t he's incredibly awesome in this movie, excellent and and, and also a charmer too. I mean, it's great to see uh, a see Arnold playing a light-hearted character exactly what I expected and, and also having Eric Furlong in his first movie you know teaching him the ropes and yes and Furlong was just amazing as a child actor at the time you know playing the role of, of John Connor and, and he was definitely the right choice to play him I mean this is something you never thought you, you would have for a child actor and it was great to see Leonard Hamilton reprising the role of Connor, yes, Sir Connor, but becoming even more of a badass too, you know, the toughest uh, and stronger female role that I've ever seen compared to what she was in the original. So I, I love to see the change that went into her because, you know, she's been going through this for a long time and, and she figures this will be the best for John, so because you know this was going to happen sooner or later. I mean, she didn't know about all this stuff until later on, and so this is like a warning. I mean, it, it, and that's where I'm going to get to the uh, special edition, too, where when Michael Bean appears uh, as um, Kyle Reese in the flashback, he actually warns uh, Sarah about her son that he's in danger, and it was up to her to stop it. I mean, he also wanted to spend time with, with Kyle, but, you know, it was going to be too late. Uh, there's also scenes uh, where we actually have more screen time with Joe Morton as Dyson, uh, where he was spending time with his wife and and his son, Well, but most of the time he's just doing some work that he needs to be done, so we're just going to create uh, a new... Uh, technology of robotics because he's the engineer to uh, do all this stuff but he knew that part but then even though he didn't realize that it's going to lead to danger that's happening you know but cause you know how you know how cyborgs are going to are going to do they're going to start destroying everything they're going to destroy human extinction um, so we got plenty of screen time. There's also a scene in the movie where, you know, when they went to the gas station, you know, just to repair themselves. He had also, uh, you know, performed some surgery a little. Well, tried to, uh, you know, try to give them, um, st you know, trying to fix some stitches on Sarah Connor and also f take out all these bullets out of uh, the Terminator. Uh, we learned that uh, there was a a scene where they had to take off the skull of the Terminator to find out there was a CPU chip and then Connor was ready to uh, take out uh, the sledgehammer and destroy it 
but John refuses to let her do that because it was for their own protection because if, if this happens you know it can be much worse also because you know John is friends with the Terminator and he thought this would be their guide to to go after the T-1000 so that way he'll be protected you know, think about that so yeah another reason why I'm glad that scene was cut so, but I understand I mean there's also more scenes included even the scene where where John was uh, trying to teach him how to smile, and I thought that was really funny. <laughs> I love that scene. I wish that was left in, but I can understand why they cut that. Yeah, I, again, running time. Yeah. Um, it's great that James Cameron returned, you know, writing the script, joining in with William Wisher, and I mean, it, I had to say the script was totally improving. I mean, it really shows, and it's great that with the powerful direction that he did it was great to see you know the entire crew back again uh, even joining in with a new set of crews uh, yeah with OLM run by David Marin and, and Mark uh, AZ Dip uh, to provide the effects and and using all these captures um, motion an early stage of motion capture you know where they just use a a model to actually uh, try to make the the walk of of Robert Patrick when he was portrayed as a team one thousand and the fact that he starts to move with all this liquid form metal that, that he does he changes everything he, he goes around from building to building or you know the way he forms completely I mean yeah doing all these transformings and stuff I mean wow it's just amazing how you can do everything with with the CGI. Very impressive. I mean, it's hard to believe because then after Terminator 2, I, I know a lot of shows that started to use the idea of liquid metal forming, like for example, the TV show The Secret World of Alex Mack with Larissa Okinick, you know, forming liquid metal, considering that she was in a weird chemical, but she could shoot lasers and stuff. <laughs> or having to see the Capri Sun commercials. Yeah, remember those ones from the 90s where you see a bunch of kids, you know, drinking, you know, going around, you know, most uh, like skating or skateboarding or any of the other, and they actually form liquid metal too, especially when they go around drinking the Capri Sun and and they change the liquid metal. I mean, I thought, wow, that was impressive. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it seems this is a new a trend of liquid metal. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, but yeah, it has an amazing story to tell, and, and I'm glad because it, it made it more impressive. I mean, having to focus on you know the artificial intelligence uh, of Skynet that was controlling these machines uh, from a nuclear holocaust, and having the resistance uh, join in so to stop it. But it also deals with what's happening in the 90s, which is going to lead to what would happen, just like what happened in the 80s. Of course, the real star of the film is the T-1000, um, and Robert Patrick plays him exactly how terrorizing and how scary he looks, compared to um, the Terminator T-800 in the original. I mean, of course, he could form liquid metal, he could do anything in, in this situation, sir. I mean that's what's uh, chilling and you know when I saw the interviews uh, of Robert Patrick though was that I had a feeling that he was um, he might have been a Nine Inch Nails uh, fan or something or maybe he might have been part of the members because I noticed he was wearing a Nine Inch Nails shirt and he also had uh, a Nine Inch Nails uh, letter jacket uh, so I thought wow <laughs> that's cool and yeah, he was very skinny too. Um, he had those pointed ears. I mean, yeah, someone they actually said that he, or at this rate, I would, it was Cameron who actually said he looked like a cat. <laughs> yeah, trying to hunt for his prey. It was really nice to see Danny Cooksey in the film too, because at the time when he was doing the TV show Salute Your Shorts, yeah, he had that nice mullet that he'd gotten. 
uh, before he actually changed it later on. But it's it's amazing because I was thinking of him as Bobby Budnick <laughs> throughout this movie. It's like, who would have thought that John Connor would be friends with Bobby Budnick? <laughs> That's got to be awesome. I mean, even though yes, uh, Bobby Budnick at times could be a jerk and you know a schemer and, and all that, but hey. <laughs> I'm also thinking to myself, man, where's Michael Ray Bauer <laughs> as Donkey Lips? So, yeah, that would have been interesting, but whatever. Because I know he's been in movies, too. Has incredible stunt work, all action, no doubt, non-stop action. And, man, I was just so incredible having to see these scenes and all of that, especially with two cuts, or even three if, if you have the ultimate cut. Yeah, and I wish there were more features on these releases, but hopefully, I mean, I know there have been later releases too, I mean, especially the 4K Ultra HD one, which actually had some huge criticism with the transfer and stuff, but nevertheless, at least you get extras on, on the later Blu-rays, and I know there was a 3D version of that too, included, but no doubt about it, I mean, this was excellent, I love this movie. Um, and I can see why it became so popular over the years. They started making a video game, a comic book. I know there's a video game for the first movie. In fact, we even have one a long time ago um, when we had Sega Genesis. But that's been gone. Uh, but yeah, they even had the Universal Studios theme parks, which is called T2 3D Battle Across Time. Yes, which, we, which had the return of the Terminator along with... Uh, you know, John Connor, you know, played by Edward Furlong. So it became uh, a theme attraction. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was so impressed that they actually uh, had uh, T-1000 appearing, you know, in 3D form. So, yeah, imagine, you're going to be amazed to see that. Um, so they got a lot of stuff. And also, of course, Blafford Dell's uh, score as impressive as ever. It, 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 they even impress uh, the audience around too by improving the the theme just like the 1984 film only even better. It, it actually brought in more beats to it. And then there's other uh, themes uh, joining in. There's also a soundtrack for the movie too which had uh, Guns N' Roses uh, called You Could Be Mine. I love that song. And there's also Dwight Yoakam's song, Guitars and Cadillacs, among others, so, wow. <sighs> but no doubt about it, uh, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, is the most awesome sequel ever made. No doubt. So, what can I say? I give this movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and hasta la vista, baby!